They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Among the fallen were also teachers, men and women who devoted their lives to helping our children fulfill their dreams. So our hearts are broken today. That was President Obama after Sandy Hook, where, as we all remember, more than 20 little kids and six adults were murdered. Now, here he is after the Senate defeated a bill that would have expanded background checks to include gun shows and online sales. All in all, this was a pretty shameful day for Washington. But this effort is not over. <coughs> I want to make it clear to the American people. We can still bring about meaningful changes that reduce gun violence, so long as the American people don't give up on it. But even after Sandy Hook, Congress could not or would not pass a common sense gun control law that the vast majority of Americans support, as we've shown you with those poll numbers. And joining me now is Congresswoman Elizabeth Esty, Democrat from Connecticut, and her district includes Newtown. And Congressman, I read uh, your statement uh, after the tragedy in, in Las Vegas, and in, in part you say, another day marred by senseless violence, another brutal addition to the mass shooting club, a club no one wants to belong to. And I know you asked for your lawmakers for political courage, but if Newtown couldn't get us as a country or Congress as a body to do something, why should there be any optimism that Las Vegas will? Well, because the American people need us to do better. And, and at this point, frankly, it is pretty stuck in Congress. And the priorities are so wrong with the majority in the House right now that they had planned, Richard, this week to bring up a silencer bill, a bill that would have meant more people would have died in Las Vegas, a bill that would have made it more dangerous for law enforcement. So they've been going precisely the wrong direction. So my own view is I'm reaching out to responsible gun owners in my district and across America because guns are part of our culture, but we have to be able to do better. And right now the political process has gotten gridlocked in part by big money that has flooded into races. So now I'm, I'm going straight to the people and asking gun owners to come to the table and help us figure out how to do better than where we are now. You know, I'm curious uh, about that very population you mentioned, gun owners uh, in your district. And I saw one comment that came in the aftermath of the Las Vegas shooting, and this was uh, Caleb Keeter. He's a guitarist with one of the bands that performed that night. He said, I've been a proponent of the Second Amendment my entire life. Until the events of last night, I cannot express how wrong I was. We actually have members of our crew with concealed handgun licenses and legal firearms on our tour bus. They were useless. We couldn't touch them for fear police might think that we are part of the massacre and shoot us. He said, we need to stand up and we need gun control right now, all in caps. My question is, for both colleagues that you serve with that might have a different letter instead of your political affiliation who will say something different to you in the cloakroom or to constituents that may vote for your opponent in a primary or, or I should say in a general, have you heard any conversion from them who say, listen, I believe in the Second Amendment, but this is a bridge too far? Well, I do hear in private conversation, whether it's in the back of the room, or the cloakroom, or whether it's at home in Connecticut, that people do understand we should be able to do better than where we are. And I'll tell you one of those areas where I'm working right now, and that's with veterans. We have an epidemic of veteran suicide. Almost all of those are with guns. And so I'm working with the VA and with veterans in Connecticut and nationally to figure out how we can do better. So I know that there's interest in and commitment in the country to do better. But frankly, things have gotten pretty gridlocked in Congress. And sometimes you got to go straight to the American people. And that's actually where I think we need to go right now. Um, and it's going to have to be pressure from the people to force Congress to change what it's doing. What will the ask be, Congressman? When I ask that because there was a decision made um, from folks that were angry on the Hill uh, four years ago for understandable reasons to say, okay, it's not just the assault weapons, it's universal background checks. And there was four key items that they were asking people. This time around, is one of the lessons about the failure then is it needs to be more incremental or is it the same package that you tried four years ago and didn't work? 
Well, I, th I think we're still trying to figure that out, to be perfectly honest. Um, we're still trying to understand what happened in this shooting. But again, at the end of the day, you know, there are nearly 100 million gun owners in America. So we're not going to get a way forward unless we engage lawful gun owners, responsible gun owners. And the vast majority are responsible. And we need their help in figuring out a way forward. And it's certainly not going to be taking away guns from people. It's got to be keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people, out of the hands of felons and domestic violence abusers and people who are dangerously mentally ill. And that's what the background check bill is about. But I think as we finding out about the Las Vegas situation, it appears that the shooter modified his gun, several of them, to effectively operate like automatic guns, like machine guns. That's something that that our law enforcement are allowed to use in the United States. That's something we reserve for the battlefield. And unfortunately, Las Vegas became a killing field, a killing ground two nights ago. And we have to do better than that. And I know almost every gun owner would support that, but we need their voices at the table. And, and that's one of the missing pieces right now, law enforcement and gun owners, to be part of the fixing. And don't let the NRA speak for you. Don't let Gun Owners of America, which has taken an extreme agenda, speak for you. You need to speak up for yourself and for this country. Obviously, this issue uh, personalized for you with what happened in Newtown and, and uh, some of your colleagues and unfortunate date lines across this country. Where we've seen mass shootings. They can obviously put a connection to it. But for any who didn't, you had Gabby Giffords and then we had Steve Scalise, colleagues that were gunned down in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Did that change at all some of the conversations or were those viewed also as one offs? You're going to have to ask some of my colleagues. I mean, I found it, find it astounding that that wouldn't touch people to think about how, how much now anybody has to think about the risks and dangers to themselves, their families, whether it's in a church in Charleston or a synagogue or a temple, whether it's in a playground in Chicago or a theater in Aurora or whether it's in a workplace in San Bernardino or now listening to a country music concert in Las Vegas. We, we value our freedoms in this country, but certainly one of those freedoms needs to be one that you can go where you want and do as you please and not be worrying about being gunned down. And we've gotten to a place like people are looking for exits in movie theaters. They're having to think about that. That's crazy. And that's not the kind of world we want to live in. So we have to do better than that and, and have it stop being a political football because that's a game of football that everybody's losing right now. And, and I am committed to trying to figure out, in fact, just had some conversations on the floor today with a Republican colleague and said, would you consider joining with me in forming a bipartisan task force, just as we have on opioids, which is a crisis that's affecting Americans all over the country? We should be doing that on guns too. figure out a better way forward. And I'm going to keep trying to do that because, again, we're all losing right now. America's losing with where we are. The only people ma making money are the political consultants and the lobbyists who are making a lot of money on this fight. I'm curious, that congressperson you asked to join the task force, that Republican, what was his answer or her answer? His answer was yes, he was interested. All right. Well, there's a hopeful beginning. Congressman, I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate it. RFL will be back right after this.